Hello, I'm Shengen Fan, Director General of the International Food Policy Research Institute. We are proud to introduce our second annual Global Food Policy Report, which examines the major food policy issues, developments, and decisions of 2012. By putting into perspective the year's food policy successes and disappointments, it suggests how to move forward those policies that improve the food situation for the poor. The world food system continued to be in a vulnerable position in 2012, with 870 million people going hungry and about 2 billion people suffering from micronutrient deficiencies. The world food system experienced a number of stresses, crises, and policy failings. The droughts in Central Asia, Eastern Europe, and the United States placed upward pressure on food prices that will continue well into 2013. Violent conflict, especially in Central Africa, was a continued cause and consequence of food insecurity. There was a failure to end the high and distortionary payments made to farmers in Europe and the United States. This situation may contribute to the uncertainties faced by farmers in other countries and reduce the incentives for agricultural development there. As the 2015 deadline for the Millennium Development Goals approaches, progress toward having the proportion of people suffering from hunger is not on track. Granted, there were some positive developments. A number of developing countries made progress in raising their agricultural production and improving food security. In fact, more and more global food production comes from developing regions. The role of gender equality in agricultural growth and food security received more attention. There was a greater recognition of the need to create more agricultural jobs for young people. In response to large-scale land deals, New voluntary guidelines were adopted to help safeguard the rights of people to own or access land, forests, and fisheries. But 2012 was perhaps more notable for talk about food security rather than for actions to achieve it. The member countries of the G8, together with African countries and private sector leaders, committed to food and nutrition security in Africa. The G20 agreed to promote greater public and private investment in agriculture and technology. The Rio Plus 20 Conference on Sustainable Development made tepid commitments to a green economy with no clear roadmap for getting there. And the EU proposed a limit on using food crops to produce biofuel. But whether these discussions and commitments will change realities on the ground remains to be seen. In 2013, many of the factors that contributed to food insecurity in 2012 will remain. Looking forward, we need to make global and national food systems more resilient, both to sudden shocks like price spikes and weather extremes and to slower moving stresses. We need to do better at making agricultural growth environmentally sustainable. And we need to do more than talk about reducing hunger. Under current policies, food prices are projected to rise significantly in the coming decades. Serious investment in agricultural productivity could help moderate prices and make a big dent in food insecurity by 2050. We must monitor whether promises have been kept and whether interventions have been successful. We should encourage those who have walked the talk and question those who didn't. And we should insist that food policies focus not just on cutting hunger, but on eliminating it completely. 